This is yeah. me. There's my bro. There he is. What's up, bro? How you feeling? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I can't complain, man. How you doing? I can't complain, man. You know me. I'm just trying to fucking maintain my creativity. Yes. Same. You know, all this madness that's happening out here. Yes. What's good? Ain't shit, man. You know, I do this thing called independent thinking. And, okay. and just calling all my homies up here, all the creators up here. And, you know, we just sharing insight to the to the folks that need it because a lot of people aspire to do what we're doing you know what i mean and be able to actually get get the looks off yeah true, um, exactly you're one of my favorite favorite designers creators um i look at you as a a, a style guide at times because we both big guys it's and, tough and for us it's tough for us it's tough so, for big niggas right. man big niggas but we know how to put it together you feel yeah. me and and you one of the niggas i always tip my hat to because you know how to put it together you know what i mean brother. chicago born and raised you know what i mean yes. every time i'm out there i'm popping up wherever you at yeah I'm every city man new orleans. remember new orleans i remember new orleans yes i was yes. there in new orleans when you came to yes. new york i made sure yes. i pulled, made sure i grabbed a lot of pieces but brother, brother you um first and foremost how and when did you think of designing and creating your own brand? Uh, man, I mean, it came at different levels. I think um, I, didn't re I didn't realize that I can make a living off this until like seven years ago. You know what I'm saying? So it was like me making clothes and designing shoes and like grade school or some shit, like just trying to figure out. But, you know, as time got, as I got older, I'm like, damn, this is becoming something that people fucking with. Uh, I'm selling shit, you know what I'm saying? So it, it just became like something that was like, oh, this is an actual career. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like a hobby and a career. This shit was like, like it was a hobby that turned into a career. Mm. That's hard. That's hard. Who was the first brand that you collab with? Like, what, what was your first brand that you actually, that believed in your vision that you worked with? Damn, damn, damn. You know what? You know what's crazy? Because I'm working with her on a project for another big brand. It was Karma Loop. Like, you know what's crazy about that? Because I was a nobody, you know what I'm saying? I just had some 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 hats. I did that Rihanna hat. Like my I, I'm embarrassed to talk about it now. Remember, I remember that hat that. is so sexist, bro. It's like I hate my old <laughs> shit, bro. My old shit is like in this day and age we live in right now, I cannot make them, a hat that says I wanna fuck Rihanna dog. It's like I had dude, that. but yeah, I, like so I didn't want to tell the world I was on Karma Loop, because it's just like at that time Karma Loop was kinda corny. But they wrote me a huge ass check for these fucking beanies and t-shirts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so they was like, I guess they wasn't a brand, but back then it was like writing checks before they fell over. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but yeah, they like the first big box situation that believed in me. And then after that, it's probably Nike. Mm. Nike. How was that? How, how was that? Like, how did you go about working with Nike? Like, you know, what, what was your strategy in doing that? Uh, Nike, Nike, Chicago. They had a division in Chicago. You know how they had like Nike New York, Nike LA. Um, I think Nike Chicago had like a football initiative they were trying to push out. So they had uh, hit me up to do the Walter Payton jerseys. So mm -hmm. that kind of birthed the um relationship. Obviously, at that stage, I didn't get no shoe. You know, I wasn't expecting a shoe. This was like five years ago, so I wasn't at that level of clout I am now. But um, they, you know, they gave me some checks. They let me, like, they the first brand, and they're just like, yo, Joe, we just going to let you do you. You know what I'm saying? On the party side. So I do, like, a big-ass, um, uh, I forgot what campaign it was rolling out, but I did a party with them. Right, right. See, niggas like, niggas like you, you know what I mean, having a sneaker is like, it's it's like having a fucking NBA Finals trophy. Yeah. You feel me? Because like, they, don't, they don't do that for, for guys like us. You yes. Feel me? The fact that you can do that and and it's being done is yeah. is remarkable. Thank you, my brother. Like, um, how did the collab with Kawhi Leonard come about with New Balance? Oh man. You know what, man? Like, this one thing that bothers me with people, right? So I hate when I drop stuff now. Now when I got shoes and stuff coming out, I try not to ask that many people like what you think about it. Cause I'd be so geeked. I think I showed you a sample a few years ago. I'd be like, yo, look at my sample. Yeah. I showed fifty thousand niggas my sample before it dropped. And I stopped doing that because it's like, it's my shoe, man. It's like, motherfuckers, like, give too many opinions and shit. So I think, like, when you design it with a company, 
if you're not like Virgil or like Travis, damn near, you, you, they damn near telling you what silhouette to do. Right. Niggas think you can go into Nike, Adidas. And tell them what you want to do. Nah, nigga, it don't work like that, nigga. It's like three, four niggas that that shit work like that. Mm. Um, but um, they, New Balance was pushing the bass. A lot of, a lot of times when you're working with these brands now, they're pushing their basketball sneakers. Right. Um, you know, I'm the type of person that think most basketball sneakers is kind of whack. So like, but I was fucking with the Kawhi joints. Plus, and Kawhi was a big, Kawhi is a big statement piece over there at New Balance. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for me. So working with Kawhi was it was funny as hell. Um, like uh, he's real cool and chill. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you, people give you too much input. Kawhi mm -hmm. was like, I like it, and that was it. That was <laughs> I it. couldn't tell like, you know, I like it. I was just like, do you do you like like it or like it a little bit? You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah. It was super dope working there. That's that's hot. Cause it's like, you know, for me, when I see you partner with certain brands, automatically, you know, just the influence that you got in me trusting your eye. Right. And just knowing what's hot, automatically I'd be like, What's going on over here? You know, right. like I growing up I was a Nike guy and then, you know, when I got into the business for real, I was more of an Adidas guy because, you know, they were seeding us, and we was we was getting some money with them niggas too. So yep. it, it was more of an incentive to do that and wear Stan Smiths and Rod Labors and so on and so forth. But yep. when I seen you go with New Balance, and I seen a lot of my other brand, friends that own brands go with New Balance, I'm like, okay, the tide is shifting. Let me get over here. Yeah. You know, I mean? while because something is brewing over here, and, and them sneakers, you know, I called you as soon as them shits came yes. out. Like, yes, I need those. Um, but you know, back to Brandon, like what's your, where, who's your, who's one of your inspirations that, that you grew up looking at that you, I won't say that you modeled your brand from, but who's somebody that's on your, uh, your style guide, like that, that inspired you. Brand you know what, bro? It's really just the streets. I think I'm so like, I've always been like, like I've always been into like, urban fashion you know what i mean like you know the drug dealers and like the the, the the street dudes like that just get it they they more clean than like the niggas that's on tv and shit so it's like that's why a lot of my influences what i do now is like it's 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 like from like 91 to like 2007 that's like a lot of my Ooh. style stuff come and, and inspirations come from that period of time um Ooh. so I, I can't really i don't know man like it was a lot of local dudes man like shout out to vic lloyd that's my big bro uh, at Fat Tiger, like it was, it was honestly, it wasn't nobody on TV or like rap videos. I mean, you know, my whole told niggas to wear button ups. So I was a goofball wearing button ups. Like, right. I think, I think we all kind of follow. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? The dishes, the button up with the scully. Yeah, oh, like I did that. Like I, I wasn't to the throwback jerseys, but like really, street dudes just dress better to me than rappers back in the day. Cause a lot of times mm. rappers got their style from like in Harlem. Like I'm from the west side of Chicago, so like. We super flashy and shit. So like, like I, I was inspired by what I was seeing in real life than like on, on TV and shit. Right, 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 right. I think I was more so inspired by that. So I was more inspired by the hustlers that was doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and like when I was coming up, niggas was wearing Coogee and Iceberg and yeah. drinking style and all that shit. The hustlers. Yeah, and that's why I fuck with New Balance too. Because you, right. because you have like, you know, I had to do my research because in Chicago we don't really fuck with New Balances like that. Like growing up, you know what I'm saying? That was a super was East Coast Chicago thing. What was growing up? Huh? What was the Chicago sneaker? Damn, I hope I don't get murdered for this shit because, like, I, I just, it's just my fucking opinion. Like, and I'm from the west side of Chicago, so some shit is regional. But, like, we Air Force Ones, like, I think it, it's this big battle where Air Force One started at and all that. Like, that's a whole different dialogue. Is um, that? Because oh, Herbo do the G, he call them G Fazos. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that, that where that origin is from? See, I'm 33. So, like, I, I've watched Herb grow up in his career, right? So, like, just like how some niggas can say, like, some shorties, they top five. I was talking to one of my homies the other day. He's, like, 19. His top five is, like, Keith. Like, like, he'd be like, damn, that's, like, no disrespect to nobody. But it's a certain age group that they, 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 they when they think of white Air Force Ones, they think of, they think of her. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like, obviously, niggas don't wear white ones for, like, niggas forever. It's forever. just that shoe. But when it comes to Chicago and a certain demographic, you can't take away from her. And again, that might just be a regional thing. Like if niggas in New York 
Harlem, Brooklyn. Y'all not calling the G Fabos unless no, that's some like, yeah, exactly. So right. regional, right, right. Is what? What's your favorite sneaker? You have a favorite sneaker or a brand that you look forward to collaborating with? Man, so I got a big year. You know, what I'm saying I just did something with New Balance, obviously for All Star Weekend. I'm dropping a new shoe, a new collection. I think it's the best collection I've ever made. Um, that's coming out in December. Hopefully, I can have a pop up, man. All this lockdown shit, man. You know, I'm the king of pop up shops, so I like to be, I like to connect with my crowd. So that's kind of like, I'm gonna be fucked up if bots eat my shoes. Though. That's all I'm scared about. <laughs> like if I get my shoes, how do you crazy, deal with that, bro? How do you deal with that? Like, how does businesses deal with with, with the bots and like you know having a popular sneaker and not even having enough? For, for what you think, like, how do you even come with the re with, with, with the number of peers that you're going to do to know your your crowd? Like, how does that work? It, it's tough, man, because, like, you know, a, somebody like me, bro, I don't want to have a thousand, two thousand shoes in the market. So I know I'm not, I can't negotiate everything perfectly, but when I negotiate with a brand, I try to go to the route where it's like, you know, don't put me in foot lockers. I don't want to be in a billion boutiques. Some brands, they want to be like, I don't really want to be, you know, I don't want to have 10,000. I don't want 10,000 niggas to have my shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, I just don't. So, you know, with me, I'm basically negotiating a deal that's more so like I get to control as much as I can. I get to release it like a week earlier. I'm breaking too much. I'm probably going to get in trouble. No, <laughs> like, no, but nah, this is real. This is gay. Yeah, people got to know because a lot of, it's not too many brothers that got shoes out. So when you, when you look at black men that got actual shoes out, you can't call a lot of niggas up. So I was thank 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 for God, Don C. Like when I signed, I should show y'all this collab that's never coming out with Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> but when I first um uh, when I first um was signing with a brand, um I hit up Don and he broke it down. Like shout out to Don C because we gotta do that more. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people are secretive about their deals, you know what I'm saying? But like when it comes to the shoe world, we we've been so happy to get shoes. Like everybody wanna shoe collab, so some niggas be slated that shit. They'll sign some crazy ass shit just to get 10 free pair mm -hmm. and not knowing that the brand that made three, four million off your shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so it's that, dope to be. So huh? that compared to like a rapper owning his masters of publishing, basically just knowing that kind of business when yeah. you're not giving up rights. It, works. It, it, it depends on how much clap you're coming in with. I hate that word. Like, I was able to prove myself like, yo, I, I don't, I don't sell in boutiques. So I do this via pop-up shop. So me is just like, again, sometimes you don't get it right. Like the collab I got coming out with in December, like how my new balance was hard to get what I got coming out with December. Um, it's going to be available in different boutiques. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I think it's going to be like maybe 18 stores around the world that got my shoes as opposed to new balance shit. I only have my shit. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's, you know, you got to sacrifice, but again, it, it's going to be dope to see people around the world wearing my shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because I think that's hard, and I agree. Because nobody wants to see everybody in yeah. some shit that's exclusive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it, for me, I'm digging. I'm forever digging. That's how I even found you, was digging. Like, oh, yep. shit. This, I fuck with this shit. This and I like being low-key, though. I, I don't want to blow up. Like, as a brand, like, I know I'm doing really good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Pop-ups do well. But, like, I'm super nervous to be in, like, I ain't going to name no stores, but, like, some... I like, if you know about me, you know about me. If you don't, I don't even get no fuck. You feel me? It's just like, I'm doing good. I feel like a, I feel like one of those underground rappers that's like, don't got no shit on the radio, but he doing good on his tour. He got good off his merch. I right. don't want to be on the radio. I don't ever want to be on the radio. <laughs> that, see, that's why it's a gem even having a collab with yes. you. I mean, because it's not something that you're going to see regular. Like, how did you build your brand to, to, to be so, you know, it's, it's high end? And it's urban, you know what I mean? Like you, you blended both worlds. You feel yeah. me? How did how did you come about it, Brandon? And like, what advice would you give an an aspiring creator designer as far as branding their shit on the internet? Because it's hard out here to really do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I think, man, you gotta have fun. This might sound super weird, bro, but you gotta have fun when you broke. Like you gotta travel. Like no, that's. So, like, I was taking spirit flights to L.A. and New York with, like, a book bag just to, like, go to different shows at SOBs. Like, I was, like, outside. I think right now a lot of the younger brands, they live on a brand. They, like, get a couple popping rappers to wear their shit. Got, like, you know, to start seating or whatever. Like, 
and then you don't even know. Like, I wanted to be the brand owner. Like, I wanted to have a genuine um, relationship with people. So, like, I was going to a lot of the big cities, broke as hell, just meeting people, going to different parties, like, kicking in L.A., kicking in New York. And, like, so when I started doing pop-up shops, like, even if Hypebeats, I used to get so tight when Hypebeats didn't post me. Mm. And, like, I ain't need them, though. I was doing good without, like, blog support and shit like that. So it would just, it, I would just say, like, building natural relationships, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that, that goes a long way because, like, once a rapper can be like, oh, we ain't wearing that shit no more. Like, I got the streets. I, like, I love having the streets as opposed to a nigga that's just in your shit because it's the hottest shit at Barney's right now. You feel me? So it's like, that's just how I roll. That's hard. Yo, how, how important is it going to trade shows? Man, that's, you know, shout out to leaders, man. Like, again, like, we was just broke. I didn't know what I was doing at Agenda and Magic. Like, trade shows now are dead. Like, the glory hmm. days of Agenda and Magic, where, like, LRG was popping, like, um, a lot of brands had the big booth. You see the Crooks and Castle booth? Like, that was an era. Street was never going to be that. Like, everybody was so different. You go to, you go to the 10 Deep booth, then you go to LRG booth. Like, the brands had, like, the people that worked there that was cool. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't 10,000 brands trying to be like each other. It was like everybody had their own group of people. So that's dead. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I think now so much internet, it kind of killed the trade shows. Because, like, now if you're a brand, you don't need no trade show. I'm popping. I got 200,000 followers. I got Gunner in my shit. I got blah, blah, blah. Like, if you a store, you just get a DM. Like, it ain't, ain't no more trade show. It's just DMs now. Like, a, mm. a big store in Italy can hit you up like, yo, I like your brand. I'm going to carry it. You don't need a trade show no more. So, this shit just did, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. Do you think it'll ever be back rocking? You think trade shows has a chance to stand after quarantine? I think it depends on the stores. Like, I, I, I miss when, like, when I used to work at Leaders, man, we used to build brands. So, we used to we used to purpose. I can't say we because I was a kid just trying to follow in Corey and Vic and Ty. I'm like, but... We used, they used to go to brands that didn't have that much pop and energy, and they used to build them. So it's just like I know y'all ain't heard of this brand. I know y'all all on this shit, but like we gon we gon put we gon tell y'all Chicago to start rocking ten deep or like the hundreds or some shit. Like because they you know I think now it's just too much internet man. It's just too much data everywhere and shit. It's just like now it's like you could be a nigga that hit a lick, and you just you can buy your closet. Like this whole SB wave, like you used to have to sit in lines and shit like that. You know now you can just you came up on 30,000, you going on StockX and buying your whole closet. Mm. Mm. What do you think about the resale? Like, like people like getting your shit and reselling it. Like, how does that work? Because I always wanted to know. This, this <laughs> for me. Like, how does that, the other side feel to know, like, okay, my shit is reselling? Because I know I'm not, you know, not going to name any brand names, but I know certain brands that might buy, that might Stay it's a limited size run and do the resale. They got people out there reselling them, shit, selling their shit just to get the higher number. But how does that work? Like, how does that feel as somebody that's actually pushing that shit out? You know what, bro? It's 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 it's, it's tough because it's like I lo I love my StockX family. I got a lot of friends and family at StockX, so I don't want this to be a diss because I'm about to work with StockX. But you know. Unfortunately, when it, when you do what I do, man, like it feels kind of good to say, you know, my New Balance on that for like fifteen hundred. I ain't gonna hold you, right? Like, I ain't right. Go, it's like it feels good. It feels good. Like I love it because I, love you know, it. so it's like, but I hate that that determines the value in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like on the flip side, so like, you know, I think last year, you know, when I first really, I, I first shot all my New York niggas that like, y'all go crazy for my shit, and like. Niggas from New York that do this last shit, it's a different animal. So I dropped the Yankees hats. I dropped the Yankees hats last, the last pop-up shop. And I woke up. It was like a line of like 100 people. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And I, and I went in, you know, we prepped the store. And um, a whole bunch of New York niggas just butted everybody got in front of the line. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is like, <laughs> like driving in New York. That's what they do, though. That's what they do. Right. And they were super respectful to me. They just cut it. They just cut a thousand niggas. And it's like, like nobody wasn't going to check them. So I'm like, you know, I ain't from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I got two in the hats. Everybody, you know, but um, I just hate when niggas have me sign some shit and then they put it right online. That's kind of corny to me. It's like, because I'm not one of those niggas that's like, my autograph is too big. I'm not signing that hat. But like, damn, nigga, you, I just I just signed it. It's on eBay now. That's like, that's, that's wild to me. You know what I'm saying? But um, 
I've grown to appreciate. I don't like. It's it's so tough, man, because I don't want to say the wrong thing. But it's like, damn, you for the wait line for ten hours just to profit seventy five dollars? Like mm. some of these niggas be tripping. But again, I don't know what you know. I'm not counting no man pocket, but it's just like, like it's like when my shoes first came out and niggas was in line waiting. Like and it was cold as fuck. They put it on. They put it on StockX immediately, and it's just like, nigga, y'all made seventy five dollars. Y'all fucking y'all got the flu now. Y'all got corona, but you, like y'all <laughs> made seventy bucks, bro. It's like, damn, G, like. So that shit was like, I, I appreciate it though, because it is another level of success, I would say. But it's just like it, it, it's it, it's weird. It's still weird. Yeah, it, I mean, I I can only imagine. Like you, you the only guy I know that did a collab with Snapple. Shout out! Yeah. To, I got I got my my Snapples. I still got like two of them that I'm not gonna drink. I'm just saving. Save it. Just because it's it's that special to me. I'm like yo. My man got a snap. He designed a Snapple bottle. Man. Like, own Snapple from Snapple. Man. How did that come about? Because that's important, bro. That, like, y your facets and the palettes that you got with the guys that you work with, that's not some regular shit. You know what I mean? Like, how did that come about? Um, You know, I think that was a situation where we just, like, they came with us. They came to my team with, like, an idea. And I, and I also have a team. That's a good thing to have with a team. Like, now it's to the point where if I, like, it took me a while to figure out I'm the type of nigga that need a manager. But, like, I was doing, I'm doing, bro, I'm from the west side of Chicago, bro. Like, the type of shit that I'm doing, like, I know offense, I'm not saying New York, L.A. has it easier. But, like, for a nigga that didn't have to move away to a big coast and do the type of collabs I'm doing, like, a lot, like, even McDonald's. I got kind of, I got criticized by a few people for doing that shit. And this is before the wave when everybody was doing, like, make, like restaurant collabs. But, like. To me, it was like, we, I, I, I did a collab with McDonald's, which is like super crazy to me. This is three years ago. And I told McDonald's, I want them to pick the lower property areas. Like, I want you to pick the McDonald's in the worst neighborhoods. And that's where we're going to put my clothes at for free. So it's just like, niggas don't understand. Everybody be criticizing, but it's like, it's from niggas that's never going to be in that room. So it's just like, and I, I ain't going to be able to write my book. Like, I can't wait to tell everybody how I finesse brands. I ain't going to say finesse, but like. <laughs> Why the fuck am I talking about it as it's going on? Like right. when, like I'm not a like I, I don't want niggas think I'm a I'm a coon. Like every time I have these meetings, I'm always talking about how we gonna highlight my black people or how I'm a like you know what I'm saying. Like if I do something, it might look kind of crazy, but like it's a big it's a big thing. Like I don't got no investors. I ain't never had to borrow no money from no drug dealer, no no rapper sponsor me. Like we just we got it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm real proud of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. You know, where I'm from, this type of shit. Like a snapper collab, bro? Like, hell no. Nah. Different, bro. That's some other you know? shit. I mean, like, how how important is it to you to give back to the culture? Because that's that's big. You know what I mean? The fact that yeah. to work with one of the biggest brands in the world, McDonald's, the Golden Arch, you know what I mean? And yeah. be like, I want to put my shit where poverty is at. I want to put my shit in the inner cities where they can get my shit for free. You know what I mean? Right. Like, how I'm doing, how I'm giving it up. How important is doing that to you? I mean, you know what, like, I, I, I'm i still a nigga that's outside, you know what I'm saying? Like, I be at, you know, like, I, I, I'm I, not a nigga that do a pop-up shop and just, like, had, like, or just don't even be in that city. So, like, I think since I'm so, like, what's up, y'all? What up? What up? Handshaking. That, you know, I feel weird if I was putting certain things on clothes and, like, like I did a, 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 um, a little thing called Beauty Supply, like, three years ago. Like, I be highlighting the black experience, so just, like, I can't do that. I can't highlight the stuff and make niggas buy tea just like that without giving back. You know what I mean? So for me, it's just like, and it's like using other people's money. Like, duh. You know what I mean? Like, if I can give back to my community and have a big brand pitch in to help put some crazy shit I wouldn't even thought they'd do, or use my art. Like, if I can have niggas lined up around the block for a t-shirt, it's like, let me go ahead and have them lined up for a good cause. Give back. Get to pay my employees. Like, Everything like we it's a win win, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like I don't have to I don't have to get people to buy clothes. That's like it's not a thing that you need to do in life. So I always feel bad about now online this Thursday online, you know what I'm saying? I don't always want to sell clothes, so it's like like how I do. So it just feels good giving back, man. Just like I just feel like I'm doing good service. Cause I keep ask, asking niggas to shot with me, you know what I mean? Right, right. People trust you with their brands, you know what I mean? Like a lot of a lot of this shit, you know. A lot, it just comes to you, I feel like. Like, I feel like people see what you do with something else, and then they'll gravitate towards you because yeah. 
you handle certain things. You know I'm a wrestler. Yes. I'm a call about the Bullet Club. Yes. Oh, my God. So that's one of the collabs I wish would have. I didn't know. I called all my wrestling homies. She was like, yo, should I do a collab with some shit called the Bullet Club? You was like, nigga, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I took, you know what? I took too long and they split up or some shit. Yeah, yeah. They split up. I mean, everybody ended up coming to WWE, but now right. they kind of got fired. Well, furloughed. So now they probably yeah. gonna, you might get that call again because Bullet Club. Yeah. So I was like, that's one of those things where it's like, that's one of the misses. I didn't realize how big wrestling still was. So I was, we was in the New Orleans for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, this shit crazy. So uh, it was super salty. Right. <laughs> how was it working with Mick Foley? Because that's something that actually happened. And I thought that was super fucking dope. The cat. You know what? My um, One of my really, really good friends, he runs pro wrestling teams. Mm. Um, so that's like a plug, you know? He pretty much, uh, I don't want to put his business out there, but like he has the license for a lot of rappers or whatever. I mean, not rappers, but like uh, uh, wrestlers or whatever. So like he, I can hit him up. Like, yo, I want to work with this, you know? So um, yeah, he just texted him. He put us on FaceTime and I was like, yo, uh, Mick, I did a Blinsky. Remember I did the Blinsky? I got a t-shirt. I remember that. With Rick Flair. Yeah. You know, I so got like, yo, I, I did that. And um, it was easy. It was easy as hell. He, he, you know, I don't know if the nigga was drunk or some shit. He just, he approved <laughs> the shit for yeah. He's like, he didn't even care to find his animal. He's like, yeah, collab, good. I'm like, okay, nigga, that was it. <laughs> so that was super, you know, super easy. You, you a raw Chicago nigga. You yeah. a, I mean, like, you know, with Don C, Virgil, Yay, you know what I mean? Like, I want to give you your flowers because I feel like you're in that conversation also. You know Thank I mean? you, man. I'm, I'm forever looking for the new shit. I'm always trolling on your page, seeing what's going on. And Thank you, my brother. Salute you for what you do for the culture. Um, you know, pushing this shit forward, especially for guys like like me. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, Thank um, you, my brother. And you know, this is why I had you on here because I'm like niggas really need to hear this. Because First laugh, man. I hate going on laugh, man. But you the brother. <laughs> I'm I hate it. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling all my friend cards. Yeah. All my friends like, now nah, wait. We had nah. ill conversations. Yes. I needed. I needed this. I appreciate you, bro. My you already, I'm waiting for my New Balance. Oh uh, yeah, I got him. I got him. This is uh, New Balance right here. Yes. This never came out. Y'all yeah, sneak peek is twenty. So I was supposed to drop these with Adidas. Never dropped these before. <laughs> Ooh. It was remote. It's my grandma's couch. You were remote in. got a weed bag. Ah, uh, hold on, real quick. Be y'all a sneak peek in this bitch. I got like four shoes that's supposed to come out. This is a D Rose, never coming out. Oh, them shits is hard. Oh, but yeah, no, shout out to everybody. Uh, thank you for having me, man. Like, um, really appreciate what you're doing. Like I said, I don't like going on live, but like, this is a great talk. I feel like a lot of people learn some shit. Oh no, I'm sure they did, and you know this 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 got to go up. So I appreciate you. Yeah, bro. save it. So I can save people saving it for sure. My dog, my dog. All right, take care, bro. Yeah, me too. Independent thinking, you know what I mean. I'm only fucking. I'm only fucking with the uh, with the real creators, with with real insight. You know what I mean. Um, and yeah, check out the rest of my independent thinkings. They're on YouTube. Um, smoke doesn't subscribe to my shit. Yeah, independent thinking, Kush God, bitch, really. <laughs>